and this is Kelsey Cooper, and I'm the host for Disabled Birth Stories Podcast. I hope those in the disabled community can enjoy these stories of bringing beautiful babies into the world and the journey along the way. I hope this podcast helps you feel seen, heard, empowered, and capable, no matter your journey to being a parent. I hope those who are able-bodied would listen to empathize with and support their disabled family member, friend, acquaintance, or random stranger. Thank you for listening, and feel free to email me if you have any questions or would like to be featured on the podcast at disabledbirthstories at gmail.com. Thanks for joining us today. After listening to this episode, please remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Please also check the description for our social media links and the link to our merch store. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only and is not intended as medical advice. Please consult your medical providers for all of your healthcare needs. Also, the views and opinions expressed by the guests are not necessarily the views and opinions of the host and vice versa. Hi, I'm your host, Kelsey Cooper, and I'm here with Kara, and she's going to tell us her story today. Kara, can you start by introducing yourself? Yep, of course I can, Kelsey. So my name is Kara, and I am a mother of two, who happens to be paralyzed in a wheelchair. And can you explain your disability a little more and how it affects you day to day? So my disability is a little bit complex in the way that I became paralyzed through an autoimmune disease called NMO that affects the spinal cord. So unfortunately, I got a super bad blast of this chronic inflammation in my spine and it paralyzed me. So now I have legs that don't work. And so a year into my paralysis, to add to it, I fell out of my wheelchair and I fractured my spine. So now I've got two nice metal rods in there. So I, I've also, well, I kind of became paralyzed twice, but did it like the wrong way around. <laughs> Just to be a bit different. But it affects me this day. In I I have serious mobility issues, seeing as though I've now got wheels for legs and things like stairs and doorways are my nemesis and I can't do what I used to be able to do. So I have to look at life in a completely different way now. But I, I suppose that makes me more, you know, kind of like I have to solve a lot more problems and yeah, be a, be a bit of a thinker now. When did your motherhood journey start in relation to your paralysis? So my motherhood journey started when I when I was 30, when I had Isaac, my son, and I was completely able-bodied. I was one of these kind of active mums. I was always out with Isaac. We were always doing something, going to play groups, going on walks, climbing trees, you know, just out constantly. And... That, that was that was my life with Isaac. And then I became paralyzed when Isaac was about two and a half and found out um, when he was about three that I was expected again. So I have experienced motherhood both able-bodied and disabled. So it, it was quite, you know, both situations have not, changed the love for my children but Winnie Winnie was my second child who I had when I when I was disabled became disabled and she was a bit of a bit of a shock because I'd gone into hospital and I'd become paralyzed and a month and a half into my hospital stay they had found a shadow on one of the scans and there was a one of the possibilities was cancer and I was thinking oh my gosh what what more do you want to throw at me? So anyway, my auntie came to see me that day at hospital and she said, oh, I'll come down with you for your scan, don't worry, love. So we, we both goes down and they did this scan <laughs> and this lady just turned around to me and said, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're pregnant. And I was like, what? So yeah, I was like, I'm paralysed and I'm pregnant. You know, didn't expect that at all. It was, it was... It was the most amazing shock. I remember I rang my husband. I went to the rooftop garden, rang my husband, and I, I just said, guess what's happened? And he, he, what? And he, I said, we're having another baby. 
<laughs> and he paused and I thought, oh no, God, you know, my heart sank and he went, it's amazing, that's wonderful. And I, I just, I just, she was our little miracle. And also, I'd, I'd been in hospital for a month and a half and they had pumped me full of drugs and I'd gone through all the consent forms. Are you, are you pregnant? I was like, no, nope, no, nope. because because I'd done a pregnancy test when I'd first gone in, but obviously it was too early in my pregnancy to show up. So she didn't show up on the test and there was no sign of it. So wouldn't be full of all these drugs. Well, that, that really scared me then. So I thought to myself, she's going to have two eggs. She's going to be born like, like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to be a disabled mum and then I've, I've got to look after a baby that's, that's, you know, oh, I don't know what she's going to be like, but... She's just not going to be okay because she's had so much go on to her. And then I thought, is she even going to survive? Is she even going to make it through the full, you know, trimesters? Am I, am I going to get to see the end result? And we did. And it was beautiful. And she is beautiful. And both my children are my absolute world. I, 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 we often say this. I don't know how I would have got through this, this paralysis without having Winnie, you know, to, to do that for me. So it was just an absolute miracle that that happened. Do you kind of uh, tell the difference or compare and contrast the two? I guess we'll start with the Isaac's story and then move into Winnie's. If you want to go into how your pregnancy started. So with Isaac, I was a complete and utter earth mother. A paracetamol would not pass my lips. I was just like, nope, I'm going to juice. I'm going to do everything okay. I'm going to, you know, it was, it was, oh, beautiful. I loved my pregnancy with Isaac. It was an experience I will never, ever forget. I felt like I was walking on clouds. I mean, I got sickness and everything, but I wanted to be pregnant. I wanted everything. And it was just, it just felt amazing. And then I remember when I went in to, to have him, it was all just like, I wanted a natural birth and I wanted everything to go all right. It didn't. It got to it. And I thought, ah, this hurts, you know. I, I went into the water and my contractions, nothing, they all slowed down. And I said, I, I said give me drugs. I, I need drugs, I need drugs. So that happened. I had an epidural and it actually took, I think it was 36 hours Isaac's birth. But by the time it came to pushing, my epidural had worn off. So I felt every single moment of it, but I was so, so glad because it was the most amazing feeling and something that I've, I'm not going to ever experience again, but I just, I just couldn't believe it. And then I remember I held him in my arms and I just, oh, he was magical, absolutely magical. I loved it. Everything about the birth and, and, you know, just, just all of it. So, so then when it came to Winnie, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, God, I, I couldn't, because I was paralyzed from just under my boobs. I, I could not feel a single thing. So with Isaac, I loved feeling him kicking. I loved watching it. I loved just putting my arms, my hands resting, you know. And with Winnie, I felt like I was missing a connection because I couldn't feel her move inside me because I was paralyzed and I've got no sensation. I, I was not aware, I was not aware I was pregnant. And because I was in hospital and I'm vegan and hospital food for a vegan kind of sucks. So I lost loads of weight. So I didn't have that, you know, glowing bump. You know, I, I wasn't, you know, dressing to accentuate my bump. It was just all really kind of almost negative in a way. It didn't feel like we had that that connection that me and Isaac had. So I was I was petrified that that there'd be issues with her when she was born, that she wouldn't make it through. And then on top of that, I was worried that we wouldn't connect. You know, I was planning on breastfeeding, but I was worried that she wouldn't latch on and, and all this kind of stuff. So it was really hard. And then, you know, I said, I remember saying that I wanted a natural birth with Winnie, but I remember said to me well you can't do that because you're paralyzed and I just took it I just went oh okay then and I wish I'd been a little bit stronger and knew my body a bit more the well, my new body my paralyzed body to say actually whoa 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 I I would like to try 
You know, I want, I've experienced it with my son. I want to experience it with my daughter. But unfortunately, I wasn't that strong. And I just went, oh, okay, then. <laughs> and then they did the cesarean, which that was a thing in itself because because I'm paralyzed, there were so many people in the room and it was so scary and so full on compared to with Isaac, me and Johnny and a midwife. It, it was, it was, it was just like absurd the amount of people that were there and, and the amount of time I remember we were booked in first thing in the morning. So we went down and they anesthetized me and were these two people just walked in the room. You've got your screen up so you can't see anything. So they walked in the room and they went, you know, down to the bottom end of my body and there were about five minutes and the, the guy doctor said, oh, hello, darling, like that. And I thought, it's a girl, it's a girl. And they passed her over to me, to Miss Oryx, and she was perfect. I mean, it was love at first sight. I remember I looked at her and all that bonding and all that worry I had just went across just just immediately it was just love I just looked and I was like oh my you are the most precious thing because uh, as well because obviously I was ill and all these you know I was paralyzed and not eating right and she was five pounds compared to Isaac who was nine you know it was like I had a little doll I, I, I just thought what and She's so smart. I don't, I don't have to hold her. I'm scared I'll break her, you know. So it, it was just amazing. Just just the whole bringing her over and just looking at her and just, just oh, my God, just I can still feel how I felt then. And it was it was just overwhelming. Just so, so much love towards a, a child, you know, my child. And, oh, God, it was it was fantastic. And for the prenatal care did you start with a midwife or did they immediately say you have to see a surgeon you know throughout your pregnancy well to be fair there wasn't really much involvement because when this all happened it was COVID time so it actually made it really hard. well it didn't make it awkward there was just nobody there there was just people were so busy saving lives and things you know I I think I missed out on a lot of care that I should have had with helping you know with Winnie and me but unfortunately it was hard times and people were needed in lots of different places so there were lots of areas where you know care got missed out but but we made it through and we needed to tell the tale and it was amazing I I, I knew it was going to be part surgery I think then there was some kind of thing of me trying to push it I, I can't remember much about it now because it, it just feels like it's ages ago but there was there was part of it that was going to be well we'll let you try at the beginning but but when I think of it now I feel like that will just said to me to just keep me happy <laughs> that was just like yeah well we'll let you try but really we're thinking nah no way she's not going to push but when it came to it they were just like no no you need to get down so go for some surgery let's cut this baby out and you know be on our way <laughs> <laughs> you said you were in the hospital before the c-section how long were you in the hospital and what well, kind of went on with that i i was in hospital because because when i found out i was pregnant i also became paralyzed i was in hospital for five months during that time whilst i had lots of treatment and because it was an autoimmune disease so they had to give me steroids and there were lots of things that went on and they wanted me to go to rehab and it, it was covid so i went to rehab but because i was pregnant and I was paralyzed and it was COVID. I was in a side room and nobody had touched me with a bicycle. Nobody wanted to, to work on the pregnant paralyzed woman because I bet there was just so many red flags around me. It was untrue. So it got to the point where I think I just pushed up a hill every day and I thought, this is rubbish. This is, I want to be at home. I want to be with my son. You know, I want, I want to just go and enjoy the rest of my pregnancy and be with my family. So I discharged myself from hospital and I remember it was like two months to Christmas and I thought, I'm going to have Christmas at home because Winnie was born in the January. So I thought, I'll have Christmas at home and then I go back into hospital. And it was lovely actually because we had, I had her and then me and my husband stayed in hospital for two weeks afterwards 
and he was allowed to actually be in a room with me and you know the, he had a little camp bed and for two weeks we just sat in a room and stared at the baby and for the c-section for him was it typical and that he got to come in and sit next to you and experience the whole yeah. thing i think because i was paralyzed they were the hospital staff were really really amazing i mean i can't fault anybody everyone was you know they were all cheerleaders for me they were all there to help me and they allowed Johnny to, to just be there because I needed that extra help because there were certain things that I physically couldn't do. So I, I think people knew that I had to have somebody there. So I suppose in hindsight, he was my carer, but also my husband, you know, but he was there and it was lovely. It was fantastic. And you said you were in the hospital for two weeks afterward. What was those two weeks like as far as now having oh. the baby and having being in the hospital it, it was magic because i remember with isaac i was in hospital and i think it was like a few hours later you, you're there putting your, your little new bundle of joint into your car and you, you go home and that was good fun because i was so excited to show up on my new son oh going in and having money and then being in hospital for two weeks nobody could visit because covid obviously and it, it was brilliant because it was just me and johnny because he obviously works, you know, a lot. And we spent lots of time together and we just spent it, we win it. And it was, it was, oh, it was lovely. I mean, it, I think, I think it was a bit awkward because I, I just got the meals. Johnny didn't. <laughs> yeah. So he had to like live off of vending machine, I think, for two weeks. It, it was hard because it was things like she had to go for her vaccinations and she had to do things like that that Johnny had to take Winnie to. So at one point, they were like, well, she needs to go and get her, her injections. And as a mum, I wanted to take her, you know, but I physically couldn't. So Johnny had to do it. And I could hear her screaming down the corridor. And I remember thinking, I need to be there. I need to be there with my baby. And, you know, I was breastfeeding. So there, there was that, that bond there that made me want to be there and, and be with her, but couldn't be. And so I had to rely on Johnny for that. And he's an amazing dad. So he was there and he did it. But that, that kind of hurt a little bit because I wanted it to be me and it couldn't be. So, yeah, I suppose looking back, that made me feel a little bit sad. And you mentioned wanting to breastfeed. How did that go after having the C-section and being paralyzed? Do you think that being paralyzed affected your breastfeeding journey? There was a difference because, I mean... I breastfed quite a while. Um, I think it was nearly two years with Isaac, and it was I, I only breastfed for a year with Winnie because unfortunately that's when I broke my back again and had to go back into hospital. But I remember, yeah, it, it was it was awkward because I'm I'm paralysed quite high up, so holding a baby in front of me and having that weight pulling me forward was 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 made made it awkward to hold her. So I remember I used to, I used to use a sling and just put her in a sling and, and attach her on that way, but it, it just it felt special to me. I was really worried she wouldn't latch on because I was worried we didn't have that bond. But as I say, as soon as I saw her and she just looked at me, I, me I remember as soon as I saw her, they they, they pass her to me and then they take they take your baby off and go and you make sure they're okay and clean them and then bring them back to you. And as soon as I did that, I just held her up to my boob and that was it. She stuck in away and I was like, yep, okay, that, that works, you know. So she she was happy. I was more than happy. But it was a lovely thing, actually, breastfeeding. Yeah. Both children, I really enjoyed it. It made life really easy, actually, because things like on a night, she I course like, so she'd be in bed with me. At first, I was really worried about her being in bed with me. And then I thought to myself, Cara, <laughs> you lie down in bed and you, you can't move anywhere because you're paralyzed. You're not going to roll on her because I physically can't do that. So I was like, I don't know what I'm worrying about. So I put her in bed with me and if she'd wake up and cry, I'd literally just put my arm around her and just pull her over to me and just attach her onto my boob and she'd fall back asleep. And it was just so easy. There was no 
you know, having to get out of bed, having to get into my wheelchair, having to wake Johnny up to pick her up out of a car. Plus, we didn't have any of that. She was just in bed with us. And I think I, I almost felt a bit of, when I'd tell people, I think I felt a little bit, not judged, but I think people would think, oh, well, you, you, you're disabled, you, you know, you can't, you can't have a, a baby in bed with you and, you know, breastfeed. And I don't think it's because people thought it was wrong. I just think it's because people don't understand it or don't, it's not a norm. And when things are a norm or things are different, people always kind of think, oh, you know, what's going on there? So it, people are always going to wonder and, and look or judge it when they don't know about it because the, the, the curious by nature, I suppose. We are just curious humans. Did you get any of that judgment or questions during your pregnancy about you becoming a mom as a disabled person? No, I didn't really. I think I used to tell people and sometimes you'd, you'd see a look on a face of... You'd see them thinking, oh, my God, she's pregnant. You know, she's paralyzed. How's that going to work? And I just think it's because people are curious because people don't understand what they don't know. So it's not that they're judging you or they think you know, you're know you going to fail at it. I don't think there's any of that because I don't think by nature people want to think those kind of bad things. I'm very, I like to look at life in a positive way and like to look at, people in a positive light so I'd, I'd never judge somebody like that so I'd like to think that people wouldn't do that to me so I, I very much think that the people that were that were saying oh wow yeah yeah you, you're doing it well done you know and if you need any help we're here for you and that that was kind of the reaction I got most of the time but occasionally you get the look of somebody trying to work it out that that was all they were doing, just trying to work it out, trying to look at the situation and think, how is she going to do that? How is she going to pick up a baby when she's crying? And I thought that. I thought to myself, how am I going to how am I going to do it? Oh my god, <laughs> no. what is going to happen here? So, so it's it's only understandable that other people would think that too. So you know, yeah, I I think it was all all very you know people can. That people are allowed to think things, but I, I'm, I like to think people thought positive things. You know, she can do it. You know, she's going to do it. When you had your prenatal appointments or went to the hospital, were there any questions the doctors had about your paralysis or what would come from the pregnancy? Well, you know, you go and see the midwives and things, and I don't think they were used to seeing it. It's not something that is very common. You know, you don't. Out, out of like the million million people you might have one that's pregnant and paralyzed you know it's not a common thing so when they're asking questions i think they're looking thinking uh there was no awkward questions asked i suppose the hardest ones were asking me about how i wanted to have winnie and because that was the hardest ones because i wanted a natural birth and i think the doctors thought that I, it wasn't possible, so that they were the hardest things to to try and say that I wanted that, and they were saying, "Well, not really, no, Carrie, <laughs> you can't really do that." So that I found that awkward because you know I don't like tell, people telling me that you know you you can't do something when you actually want to try, and there was no kind of the one which literally were there, so I felt a little bit put out, but. You know, while you were in the hospital, how was mobility and getting around? Do you feel like it was accessible? Um, I was laughing because when I went into the hospital and I was so worried about having a cesarean, thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be in so much pain. It's going to be awful. I'm going to, oh, it's going to, well, how am I going to transfer? So I had the cesarean and I think the next, I didn't get out of bed for a day. The next day I went to transfer and it was absolutely fine. I didn't know that I'd just been cut up and a baby had been pulled out of me. Honestly, I was a bit like slow and, you know, my neuropathic pain was high. I don't feel normal pain below my paralysis. I get something called neuropathic pain, which is where, say, for example, I got the cesarean wound. My body 
know something's happened, but can't tell. So it sends me pain signals like down my legs or in my bum cheeks. So I, I will I will get pain, but in a different way. So that's my neuropathic pain. So that was really high. And I knew something had happened to my body, but I didn't know, like you see people with cesareans and they're really, really struggling. And I was thinking, oh, I've got a cesarean, I'm going to be in a wheelchair and getting in and out of it, having to transfer, it's going to be really hard. It was a breeze, it was fine. And then I was really worried about Winnie and how I was going to carry it. Because obviously you're holding baby in your arms and my, it's, with my body, it's my arms that work. That's the only thing in me that works. So I was like, how am I going to push my wheelchair and carry my baby? So I ended up using a sling and I, I also just used plain scarves, which worked out easier in the end and just tied her onto me. At first when she was little, I used a sling and used to strap her around. I remember just going around the hospital and she was just so snug and little and just sunk away in the bottom of this sling. And I used to think, I hope she'd drop out, you know, but it, it was just, ah, oh, it was, it was a breeze. I got to say, I loved it. It was. I didn't even know I'd have a cesarean. You think that that was like the bonus points to me. <laughs> but after going through all that, it was like a little bit of, there we are, Carrie, that's your reward. So what was coming home from the hospital and taking care of her now as a paralyzed mom? Like what were some adjustments you made or what was it like compared to Isaac? Well, first off, I live next door to my parents now and I've got an identical twin sister and they are all, well, they're carers and they're all very hands-on. And very good with my children. We're, we're sister homeschools, so she's got two children herself, and we're all super close. So I got so much help; it was brilliant. And I've got a big family, and everyone visited, and it was lovely coming home. And everyone made it feel special. And I was I was a bit worried about the sleeping arrangements and like rolling on the but I can't roll, <laughs> and just things like that. Just the, the little the logistics of it made me kind of question things and I was a bit mm-hmm. but when she came home it all just fell into place it all just happened you know quite organically and it just worked it just Isaac loved it because he now had a baby sister and ever since they've been together they are so close they are so wonderful with each other they're the amazing kids and yeah, it, it just worked so well. But the things like I had to get ramps, you know, in here. So when I could get from the kitchen to the living room. And so when she was strapped to me, going down the ramps used to make me a little bit nervous because I was like, oh my God, don't fall out, don't fall out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but no, and it, it's just being a paralyzed mum was quite scary because, like I said, people like to like to follow each other. So I wanted to find other people out there that that had disabilities with children. And it's it's not something you see all the time. It's not something out there. So it was hard for me because, you know, there was nothing to look at to show me kind of what to do or to make me give me a bit of comfort thinking that I was okay because there were there were more people like me. And things like Instagram are good because you see that there are people in the world, you know, that are doing it. And, you know, so can I, you know, I can do hard things. And I was like, right, I'm doing this. So just just seeing that little bit on social media really helped. But like I said, there's there's, there's not enough out there with, you know, people with disabilities are, are you know, we're not kind of seen. It's, it's not something that you can go, oh, look, you know, oh, they're there on TV, I know them. Oh, yeah, they're doing it. You know, it, it's not something I can relate it to because it's not something I see. So I found it difficult because I felt isolated and alone. You know, there's one thing being paralyzed and doing it, but there's one thing being paralyzed and having a baby because there's two things now that I'm looking for and I can't tell. Like I say, you, you don't you don't see it in the media it's not something that that you're confronted with on a daily basis, so you could you can relate to that. You know, you can say, "Oh, look, that person there, oh, they're they're suffering with what I've got." You know, all oh, right, that that's how they're doing it. There's there's nothing like that. There's nothing out there to to give you a bit of comfort or a bit of hope. You have to create that all yourself. So I suppose I had to tell myself a lot of times 
that you know I could do this and I'm I'm doing well. There were there were a lot of kind of self justification there to you know encourage me as a person. I had to do it internally. I got it from my family, but I had to rely on a lot of inner strength to you know get through it because you know I was doing it on my own and and not on my own because I had my husband and my family, but I felt isolated because there was no one out there that I could see like like me, you know. So that, that made it feel quite isolated and difficult. Plus then I thought nobody to kind of think I, I, I'm doing it okay. I'm doing it right. I'm doing it okay. Is this right? I mean, oh, you know, oh my God. You know, like it was, it was scary, really scary. So obviously, you know, I'd say, then say, no, Cara, don't, don't think like that. You can do this and you are doing it and you, you're doing a good job. Come on, you, you could do it, you know. I just give myself a lot of pep talks and, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm strong as a person. In searching for things, is there resources or things that you found since then that you think would help others? Since then, yeah. I think I think there's a lot of things online. There's a, there's a big, big community of disabled people online and I think people are realizing that it's okay you know because people are seeing it more now social media is a big thing in some ways it can be bad but in some ways like in this situation it's showing others you know by by putting yourself out there and showing others I, I follow a lot of people that have recently had children and I think oh my god it's amazing you know, and you can watch it and you think, I wish, I wish I'd have seen that, you know. And I suppose when I had Winnie, I wasn't, well, I would just be paralyzed. I had Isaac, I had Winnie the baby. I didn't have that much time, you know. I didn't go on, on my phone. I, I hardly, you know, use my phone that much. So I was going to bed at like half six and all day I was with babies, you know. So to go on social media and things was, was quite difficult. So it was only as when he got older that I found a big community there and it's social media when looked at in the right way, you know, and used in the right way, really can help, I think, in my personal experience anyway. I think mean, it can be brilliant. And things like this, you know, listening, like the, the disabled podcast, listening to other parents and their experiences and their journeys, I think it, it brings people an awareness that, yeah, I can do it. So and so's done it, and they did a bloody good job. So so could I, you know. And I think that really, really helps. That that is just that awareness and spreading it. Did you have any books or courses or anything that you did? No, you just kind of wing it. <laughs> I think, I think um, yeah, I just winged it. I had a midwife that called me up once, you know, twice afterwards, and that was pretty shocking. You know, there was no aftercare when I was like. Hey, up! I'm paralyzed. I've got a newborn, and yep, there's a. I don't really know what to do, and it was just a bit rubbish. But like I said, COVID, scary times, and yeah, people didn't know what was going on. It was all very much, you know, we were staying indoors. We just phoning each other, so I, I lacked a lot of help there. But you no, know, the, there's no step by step guide to having a baby and then having a baby paralyzed you know and doing it for a wheelchair there's no there's no how-to book there probably is things out there if you really research it but as i say i newly become paralyzed and just found out i was pregnant so it was all it was all quite fresh and i didn't have the time or the energy or the strength to really look into it it was all just happening to me and it was all just like just kind of like, I was like, well, just got to go with the flow. Just got to just see what happens and hope, hope to God it's okay. Because otherwise, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, you know? So are there any, I guess, final thoughts or encouragement for others that you want to leave people with? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, you can. Just because you have a disability does not in any way, shape or form mean you are going to be any less of a parent. You know, I thought that about myself and I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do it. But I love Winnie as much as I love Isaac and that is through the roof and nothing, my body not working properly does not affect that. And 
it's not affected my way as being a parent. You know, there's things about being a parent that I had to do differently. Like a lot of the time, I'd pick Winnie up. I'd have to bend over and pick her up in this really odd kind of, you know, it looked a bit barbaric, I suppose. But that was all Winnie knew. And that was all she was aware of. And she was completely fine with it. And it had to be different because that's the only way I could do it. And it was different. So I would say, as a disabled person, I had to think about being a mum in a completely different way. And I had to do it, my motherhood. You know, but my, my, being a mum to Winnie, I, I I did it completely different as I as I did being a mum to Isaac. They, they were completely mirror opposites, but they both worked. They both worked. They were different, but they worked. And people would look at the way I handled Winnie and picked her up. And I used to just pick her up with one. Well, I used to hold her with one arm and move and things. And people were like, "Well, we're gonna drop her," but. But that was what we were used to. And I, I had a way of holding her shoulders that, that was just different. And people weren't used to seeing it. So they didn't know what to do about it. They thought it was maybe not right or they thought I was doing something wrong maybe. But I know that I was doing it right because it felt right, you know. And I had to do it differently, but it felt right. And I knew it was okay. So if you're disabled... You know, a lot of the time you do have to do it differently. We have to do life differently. So motherhood is, is another thing that we have to do differently. But you can do it. There's nobody ever that should tell you that you can't because they have no idea. They're just probably very ignorant and rude. As a disabled person who's been through it, I know that you just have to adapt. But you, you are completely capable of it. So that that's my my thoughts on on the matter of you know being a disabled mom. You, you can do it. So it, yeah, and yeah, you love your child just as much. Nothing changes that love. Thank you, Cara, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Kelsey. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening and feel free to email me if you have any questions or would like to be featured on the podcast at disabledbirthstories at gmail.com.